a lot of my followers on Instagram and in my Facebook group have reached out to me and told me they're really struggling on getting used to using ClickUp and really making it work for them. They really want to use it. They love all the features, but they are just like, whoa, I don't know what to do with this. So today, I want to help you with a little quick start guide. Tell you what to pay attention to, what to leave out, and what to focus on. Hey everybody, it's Yvonne with AskEvie.com and right here on this YouTube channel, we are talking all about business efficiency. No matter if it's mindset, if it's tools and tricks and things how to automate and streamline your business, you are at the right spot. And if that sounds like something you're looking for, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to get notification every time I upload a new video. Now, let's jump right in. As you might know, if you're following me on my other social media outlets where I'm talking about all those efficiency stuff, you know I am in love with ClickUp and right now we are doing a full series on getting everybody started on ClickUp, how to use it, how it looks, what to do and what not to do. And I wanted to start out with a quick start guide for you because it seems like a lot of people, and I have experienced it myself when I started out with ClickUp, are overwhelmed. ClickUp is kind of like the Photoshop. You go into it and it's like, oh my God, so much is possible. Oh shit, I don't know where to start. I don't know where to focus on. This is too much. I'm going back to my, my pen and paper list and that's what I'm going to do. I don't want you to get that overwhelmed. So let's give you a couple pointers on where to focus on, what not to do within the first month and how to build up getting used to ClickUp so it can work for you. Now, I want to start out by saying, try it for yourself. Use it for you. Even if you're working with a team, you need to know your way around and you need to know how to do all the things before polling in a team. ClickUp does allow you to import Asana and all kinds of other stuff, so you do have that capability when you're ready for that. The second thing you really want to pay attention to is do your statuses as a timeline. Start with their simple statuses. You really don't have to mess around with those too much. Meaning use open, in progress, finalize, approved, closed, those timeline statuses. I have seen a lot of people also use their planning timeline statuses, meaning needs to be done within the next 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, or just this year. Those timelines work okay too. What I don't want you to do is in the block view of putting them into categories like graphic design or web design. Do not use those as statuses and you will learn later why. The other thing I want you to do is Keep your projects broad. So one thing that I went into is I have a website, I have a store, I have a membership site, I have YouTube, I have Facebook, I have Instagram, I have all of those stuff. And I started out using them as their own sub projects. So I had Ask Evie in the project and all of those underneath. Don't do that. It'll make things crazy. So open up a space that is, ask Evie, underneath you have multiple projects. I have client workflow. You will see that in an upcoming feature, how I funnel my clients through that to keep a track of them. I have general admin task, which is literally just a to-do list. Misc items just get thrown into there. Then I have my online presence. We have the website, we have the store, we have the membership side. We have additional misc, always anything that needs thrown in that just didn't fit anywhere. We have our content planner, which is content in general. It doesn't matter if it's the blog, if it's YouTube, if it's long blog posts on Facebook or whatever. If it's in general content you are writing, that's where that will be. And you will sort those with tags. Social media and marketing is another one on there where I have my certain workflows and all of that right in there. And that will be your standard categories. Do not do 
too many of those. Try to keep them broad. Kind of think of it as your sorting box. And then you will use tags to make subfolders in that. So for example, looking at my content planner, I have guest posts, I have regular blog posts, I have YouTube videos. All of those is in my content planning project, but they are sorted through tags that I set up that set guest post, blog post, YouTube. That will make your life way easier to get started with everything and keep you focused on the things to get used to how things are working in ClickUp and to get everything done. One big thing that has helped me in the beginning, ClickUp has the capability of doing auto repeats, meaning you know you're doing bookkeeping every Friday, every week. You can set that in a schedule. You also can set dependencies, meaning you can do, it doesn't show that the images for your blog post are due before the blog post is done. You can do all those kinds of things. Stay away from it in the beginning. Get comfortable using this as a simple task manager and then move into automating all of that. One big thing that has helped me like no tomorrow. With the sorting capabilities here in ClickUp, you can jump in between spaces and projects and all of those. And suddenly you are in a project in a subtask and you're like, yeah, but I have more to do. Where are all my things that I have to do? You suddenly are like, oh my God, this is not everything I am supposed to be doing. Something is wrong here. Take all of these points of information out. Go up here, go into all spaces and there is everything. Those are not sorted right now to a point of, okay, what do I need to get done now? Make sure you're all spaces, there's nothing else up here and you click due date and there you go. Go on the top left, click all in your space and click all in your project and then go into the list view and it will show you everything that is for you. Secondary, there is a difference between team and me. Being up here on team, that shows you everybody. Meaning, is it assigned to you? Is it unassigned? Is it assigned to somebody else? If you are on team, you will see everything. So clicking us on assignee, I don't have any unassigned. So you'll see my face everywhere. But if I would have unassigned tasks, you would suddenly see the unassigned up here. So if you are trying to find just your simple task list, what needs to get done now? Go into team if you're not meticulously assigned everything to you. Click on due date and you'll have everything that needs to get done right now, right on top, the easiest way to find your to-do list. If you click on team, you're going to see everything, no matter if it's assigned or if it's unassigned and who it's assigned to, you will see everything. With there at this point of recording of the video, there is no auto assign to yourself if you are in the team view. If you're in the me view, it will auto assign to you. But having said that, getting used to click up and doing all of those things, it can be really overwhelming, which is why we're doing this quick start guide. So make sure you are in team view, you are in all spaces, and you are in all projects, and then go into the list view and you will see everything. If you need to know what's due right now, just click on do, and it will sort everything by the due date. I hope this will make life a little bit easier for you, and I'll see you in the next video when we start digging deeper into ClickUp.